Marjorie Taylor Greene is one of the biggest morons in America, and she is a lawmaker, but yet she knows nothing about law or policy. Therefore, she kind of is forced to just be a cheerleader for the far right and for Christian nationalists in America, which she says, by the way, is a good thing. But because she can't actually come up with any policies to improve the lives of her constituents, well, she's forced to try to goad people into giving her publicity stunts, which she can then fundraise off of. For example, she tweeted to Parkland mass shooting survivor turned gun control advocate David Hogg, I hear you and your girls are funded to come to town this week to once again try to manipulate some of my gutless weak colleagues to vote for gun control that will violate our freedoms and leave Americans defenseless. I don't see you on my schedule. Why not? First of all, note the homophobic jab there. I see that you're in town with your girls. It's funny that you're always hanging out with girls. Is that your only friends? Are you not a real man? Do you not have friends who are male? You must be gay, and that's bad, definitely. I mean, what a horrible person she is. But she is trying to get this person who literally became a gun control advocate because he almost died during a mass shooting to come to her office so she can then tell all of her constituents, hey, I just defended your rights. I defended your freedom. Maybe chip it and give me 10 bucks. It's just so shameless. It's so transparent. And yet she does it all the time. And anyone who engages with Marjorie Taylor Greene and tries to have an honest conversation is wasting their time. To have a conversation with her would be less successful than having a conversation with a houseplant. And I mean that literally. It's why people like AOC refused to engage in a debate with her. It's why David Hogg turned her down, because you're not going to have a conversation with someone this bad faith, this moronic. And David Hogg responded by ratioing her into oblivion, saying, Congresswoman Green, I'm more interested in protecting children and meeting common sense people who are looking for reasonable solutions to stop children from dying. Don't really have time to help you go viral for attacking survivors so you can fundraise. Respectfully, David. And he adds, since you were going to use me as a fundraising opportunity, I will ask people to please donate to support our march on June 11th of Americans, both Democrat and Republican, demanding gun safety. Go to marchforourlives.com slash donate. Now, Fred Gutenberg, whose child Jamie was murdered during the Parkland school shooting, tweeted this to Marjorie Taylor Greene. Hey, Representative MTG, I will also be coming to D.C. I will bring pictures of my girl, Jamie, who was murdered in Parkland. If you are looking for people to put on your schedule, please put me Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. What day is best for you? Now, for some reason, Marjorie Taylor Greene hasn't responded. Hmm, interesting. Maybe she didn't see it. Maybe it's just a little bit more difficult to look a father whose child was murdered in the face and say, you're taking away my freedom. She can't do that. It's easier to try to bully someone who is a lot younger than her, probably, you know, she's twice his age, and who she perceives to be gay. So therefore, you know, maybe she could push him around because he's gay, he's weak, he's always hanging around with girls. But she doesn't want to talk to this father, doesn't want to look him in the eye. Interesting. Can't fundraise off of that, right? You can't get a win out of that situation because you kind of look terrible. No, she still looks terrible either way. This is an individual who followed David Hogg around in DC and was yelling at him, harassing him because he wants to take away her freedom, supposedly, because he's advocating for common sense gun control. I mean, this is who we have elected in Congress. And she's going to win re-election almost certainly. I mean, if you look at the GOP primary that took place in her district, she won with 69.5% of the vote. So GOP voters, specifically in this district, they see that they have this imbecile representing her. They're not getting any wealthier. They're getting more poor, more disadvantaged. They still don't have health care basic access to education that is affordable. And yet they're saying, you know what? We want to send this imbecile back to Congress because even though she's not doing anything to improve our lives economically or socially, at least she's making people um, feel bad by owning the libs and calling gays pedophiles, which on that note, she uh, kicked off pride by doing just that, saying, I could care less what two consenting adults do sexually, nor do I judge. But when it comes to adults training children sexually, both mentally and physically, I do care. And so do most people. We must protect children from child grooming predators and abusers in every way possible. First of all, the saying is I couldn't care less because if you say that you could care less, it implies that you do care at least a little. But... She's implying here that LGBTQ plus people are groomers and pedophiles, and that's what they're doing en masse. Meanwhile, one of her closest allies in Congress, Matt Gates, is being investigated for sex trafficking of minors. 
And to make matters worse, she just hired fellow Christian nationalist Milo Yiannopoulos as an intern who was fired from Breitbart literally because he made pro-pedophilia comments. The New York Times described a tape where he made these comments in a 2017 article saying, but in the tape, the fast-talking polemicist is clear that he has no problem with older men abusing children as young as 13, which he then conflates with relationships between older and younger gay men who are of consenting age. No, 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 you're misunderstanding what pedophilia means, Mr. Yiannopoulos says on tape, in which he is talking to radio hosts in a video chat. Pedophilia is not a sexual attraction to somebody 13 years old who is sexually mature. Pedophilia is attraction to children who have not reached maturity. He adds, dismissing the fact that 13-year-olds are children. The notion of consent, he says, is arbitrary and oppressive. At one point in the video, an unknown speaker says that the behavior being defended by Mr. Yiannopoulos is akin to molestation by Catholic priests. Mr. Yiannopoulos responds in an ironic tone by crediting a priest for having helped develop his sexual technique. Conservatives reacted with near unanimous disgust at the comments. But what does Marjorie Greene do? She hires this individual who made pro-pedophilia comments. He defended child abuse and said that age of consent laws are oppressive. And yet she's like, I want to hire him. I want to align with the person who's under investigation for sex trafficking of a minor whose ally is in trouble for this thing. And yet she's saying, oh my God, we have to protect children from uh, groomers, LGBTQ plus people. Marjorie, it's not LGBTQ plus people who are groomers. You need to look in the mirror because you're aiding and abetting actual fucking groomers or people who advocate for the abuse of children. It, it's truly astonishing. But again, she won her election overwhelmingly, her GOP primary. So, you know, she wears this hypocrisy on her sleeve in a shameless fashion, and her constituents said, yep, let's give her two more years at a minimum in Congress, overwhelmingly so. So it's not just that GOP lawmakers are unhinged and insane. The base has become so detached from reality that now... They don't care about their own well-being. They don't care about the economy as much as they care about triggering the libs. They don't care that they can make a living wage and don't have health care, so long as Marjorie Taylor Greene continues to call gay people pedophiles. Isn't that astonishing? One of two major political parties is essentially an alliance of Christian nationalists and far-right fascists, and they make it known that all they care about is total domination and subjugating the rest of us to their theocratic beliefs, but yet the base is like, yeah, I'd rather stay poor and vote for that so that way they can own the libs than actually vote for someone who cares about us. It's truly ridiculous, but this is the state of American politics. The GOP is a cult. And until we convince our GOP friends to wake the fuck up and stop voting for these ghouls, nothing is going to change in this country. The GOP base loves it, right? There's no such thing as ultra MAGA. It's not like Marjorie Taylor Greene or Donald Trump is some sort of an anomaly. This is who the GOP is. And to deny it is to be complicit in what they're doing to this country. So that's Marjorie Taylor Greene, shamelessly hypocritical, shamelessly trying to make money off of school shooting survivors who th she thinks that she could bully. And yet, you know, she's going to get elected. She shouldn't even be in Congress, mind you, because it is unconstitutional, literally, for an insurrectionist to be in Congress. But yet she's going to get elected overwhelmingly. I mean, what kind of a backwards ass country is this where we actually have somebody in violation of the Constitution because she's an insurrectionist, but yet, she gets to remain in Congress even though illegally she should be disqualified from running. And on top of that, we have a secular constitution as fucked up as the U.S. Constitution is. But at least it's secular. And it says that, you know, the government cannot establish a religion. But yet, the theocrats have taken over and they get to choose the way that we live our lives. Trans people shouldn't be able to transition. If you're a parent, you can't seek out gender from and care for your child. If you're a woman, you can't get an abortion. But yet these people are the defenders of the Constitution. It's just truly ridiculous. But again, this is the GOP. Marjorie Greene isn't the exception to the rule. She represents all of them. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.